the Middle Passage presentation written by Charles R. Johnson. Rutherford Calhoun was the main character in this novel. Um, he owes his debts to Papa. Um, Isidore blackmails him into marriage. Papa tells him that if he pays, he will pay off his debts if he marries Isadora. <clears throat> um, in a bar one night, Rutherford sees a drunk man who shows him his papers to get onto the Republic. Um, Rutherford steals the, the papers from the man and sneaks onto the Republic. Rutherford's self versus self conflict is that he likes Isadora and thinks she's a great person, someone that he could settle down with. However, he thinks that committing to her will restrain him from what he defines as life. Character versus character, Rutherford and Isadora. Isadora blackmails him and insists that he could do better and be a better man and settle down and have a family. Rutherford, however, does not want to tie himself down to the responsibilities that come with marriage and just live his life. Character versus nature is when we have to deal with the storm after the slaves entered the ship. Some quotes that represents his fears are when he says, as a captain, he cannot bear having anyone, especially his first mates, correct him. And also, sit, said he, motioning to the chair at his chart table. I don't like people looking down at me. Some of his beliefs is that he believes in Christian decency and doing the right thing as much as the next man. He had also said, I don't hold it against you for being black, but I believe in excellence, an unfashionable thing these days. The desires for Captain Falcon are to be admired, respected, above all, friends, and achieve perfection. On page 51 of the novel, there is a quote, a desire to achieve perfection, the loneliness, self-punishment, um, and bouts of suicide this brings, and a profound disdain, disdain for anyone who failed to meet his nearly superhuman standards. For the trauma that the Captain Falcon endured was being bullied by taller boys. Um, on page 56, the quote, I'm not a big man, as you may have noticed, and as a lad, I was bullied by taller boys. Indeed, I was. Um, no, nay, a day passed, not a day passed in my childhood that somebody didn't single me out for a beating. So for historical influences, The Middle Passage is a book set in the 1830s, but it was actually published in the 1990. Um, the, in the book, there's a spirit that the captain boards on the ship being the omissary god and people are able to do spells, which is very inaccurate when we compare it to like actual things that would happen during those times. So Peter M. Phillips wrote a book called Ancient Manuscript and Digital Culture, where he touches on religion and how it has always been engraved and practiced. Um, he writes that the Bible as a whole, as well as its cons constituent texts, have always been part of visual culture, as stone tablets or scrolls or codices, as text scrawled in graffiti. Bible engagement had to be facilitated in any way it could. With that being said, the time period Johnson wrote this book influenced adding this inaccurate event to the book um, around the 1990s or even a little bit before that, horror movies involving demons, possessions, or just spirits from beyond were submerging and becoming more accepted. Here are some examples of representation of race in the novel. Um, the free slave boat slave ship. The captain disliked the African-American race. Illegal slave trade and transportation. The split of some families and humiliations. <laughs> Um, poor Diet and Health. Linda A. New Newson wrote a chapter from an article about the Middle Passage and the slave trade. She talks about the slaves' diet and how they are fed um, millet cooked in water and flavored with oil and salt, and on other occasions, beans. On the voyage, some slaves' diets of dystenty <clears throat> from being fed badly cooked or almost raw fish that were caught during the voyage. This is our works cited page.